Welcome back. Now, analysts say reviving the fortunes of Africa's largest economy is a critical challenge that Tinubu must immediately tackle head on. Nigeria has debt of around 103 billion US dollars and faces unprecedented levels of inflation, high unemployment, and a heavy reliance on dwindling oil revenues, which has led to an exodus of mostly young Nigerians in a brain drain crisis known locally as Jakba or Escape. Shagun Shokbito, principal partner Woodridge and Scott Consulting, joins me now as we analyze the president's speech and the matters arising. Many thanks for joining me, Shagun, on this discuss. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start this way. In an automatic move, if I may say, as the president announced that subsidy is gone, the effect kicked in. Panic buying, filling stations closed, pump price increased. How did that hit you, really? Well, you know, I mean, we had spoken about this uh, before the inauguration, during the campaign season and after, and I have maintained a very consistent position and it hasn't changed. And I think that what, has, what we've seen happen as a reaction from the public um, between yesterday morning and today is just a validation of what I've been saying. You remove your subsidy without creating very clear, a clear pathway as to how um, you know, that removal will be uh, uh, mitigated. Well, the impact of that removal will be um, reduced as significantly as possible on the on, on, on ordinary Nigerians. You have a crisis in your hands. So, of course, the first thing that happens when um, a president or any other government official that holds a very uh, prominent role um, in any country makes a, a policy statement is that there will be an immediate reaction you know, by the public, um, that reaction will have little or nothing to do with the actual economics of that matter. And that's what we've seen. So right now, the president has made a statement in his inaugural speech. And as a result of that, the oil marketers, um, independent oil marketers especially, have reacted immediately. And, and it's a business reaction. It's, it's not a political reaction. Um, so what will happen is, that uh, statement by the president has created uncertainty uh, for the players and the operators in that industry because the replacement cost for, the, for their current holding stock has become unclear. So they will need to make decisions as to what they will do with that stock. Are they going to hold on to it, mm. sell at current prices, and run the risk of not being able to replace that cost because the cash they generated from the current stock they have may be inadequate, putting them in a bit of a cash flow conundrum, you know, or do they um, immediately hike their prices to try and mitigate the, the impact of the increase in the replacement costs should, you know, the president's pronouncement actually do kick in. And I think that's what we've seen. Um, the statement by the NNPC uh, will do absolutely nothing to, to assuage or deal with, you know, to assuage or deal with, um, you know, that 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 reaction because uh -huh. the reaction is not a reaction to supply. We don't have a supply problem. The problem we have is a pricing instability problem uh -huh. as, that has been created by the number one man in his first speech to Nigerians. So it's a very brave thing that the president has done. I hope that they have a plan um, that will uh, uh, ensure that this doesn't snowball into a crisis. I, I hope that they have a plan. I hope they have a statement that they're going to make in the next couple of hours. Mm. Um, it cannot be. This must be dealt with in the next couple of hours, max one day or two days. Okay. Uh, they must come forward and tell Nigerians how this removal is going to be handled, the specific implementation process, I don't want to use the word palliative because I think that that reduces the importance and the implications of what you know what we're talking about. I think that it's not it's it's not a matter of palliatives. It's it's more about um, the alternative um, courses of action that the government will make to reduce the immediate impact on Nigerians. Uh, so so we we'll wait to hear from the All government. Right how this is going to be dealt with. But right now, in my opinion, that was, I think, an unnecessarily bold move. Okay. You know, he could have, he could have um, addressed that subject matter in a more sensitive 
way than to make such a categorical statement. All right. Okay, so let's just uh, take uh, me very quickly because of time. Let's talk about the high point of um, the uh, the inaugural speech economically. That is, he made uh, lots of uh, uh, announcements as it as it were. He also talked about um, house cleaning. He talked about um, the CBN's uh, narrow redesign policy, how he was going to revisit. But specifically, he also talked about um, uh, budgetary reform to stimulate the economy without engendering inflation. How possibly do you think he can go about this? Well, it's, it's, I, I don't think it's really such a difficult thing. I think we need to, there are two things. I, I listened to that speech mm. uh, with a bit of mixed feelings. Okay. On the one hand, he went into quite a lot of details yeah. about the direction that his government was going to take. And I think that's commendable. Um, on the other hand, though, I think he went into too much details. I think that a speech like that should not be... Um, a manifesto reading speech. It sounded like he was reading his manifesto or his party's manifesto. I think a speech like that should have um, addressed the question of vision, the question of galvanization of national energy, the question of rallying. It, it should have been a rallying cry and a rallying call to citizens of a country that is suffering after what many would consider an eight-year nightmare. So his mantra of renewed hope is a good mantra because, you know, I think it was intelligently put together because on the one hand, he is part of the APC that promised hope and change. On the other hand, he is admitting in saying renewed hope that that hope was dashed and we want to renew it. So for me, his speech should have been more heavier on, on, on vision, on leadership, on direction, on okay. painting an image and a picture of what Nigeria would look like four years into his tenure, which would then encourage Nigerians to say, look, you've done amazing. Let's give you another four years. But he didn't do that. He spent almost all of the time on that speech speaking about policy initiatives and policy you know, direction, which is also good. But I thought that that should have come later. That should have come shortly thereafter. That speech should have been more of a rallying cry you know, and a call to action for, for, for Nigerians. But having said that, the things that the president touched on um, in the speech, I think, I think they were important. I think it's a good thing that he, he spoke about some of those things um, in the kind of detail that he gave. For example, talking about the GDP, mm. I, all economic observers would agree that Nigeria growing at an average of about 1.3, 1.4% growth rate over the eight years of the Buhari administration was terrible. Of course, there were two recessions in between that, but even those recessions... You know, some would argue could have been prevented or at least should not have been as bad as they were. Um, so to have that type of growth projection of, you know, growth achievement in a period when we're also growing, when our population was growing at above 3% per annum, was terrible. So to come out and boldly say that you would uh, attempt to grow in play, um, sorry, GDP yeah. at about 6% is good, but clearly we need to be doing better than that. If um, we say 6% in the next three years, for example, mm -hmm. and then maybe mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be trending towards 10% before the end of his four-year tenure, yeah. then that will be good. But it's a good start. Uh, he spoke about inflation. Yeah, he spoke yeah. about the yeah. currency regime. And I think that is very important. The currency, this current uh, multiple exchange yeah. rate policy of the central bank must mm. stop. It is one of the biggest problems that we have had in the Buhari administration that has created a lot of multiplier effects that trickle down into all sectors of society. So, you know, the president did address certain key policy initiatives from the economic standpoint that I think were good. His, his talk about agriculture was also good, yeah, you know, um, processing zones, uh, ability to uh, provide storage capacity and all of that. Well, it, was, it, was, it was good. So we would hope that he would have the will um, to then go ahead and implement those things that he spoke about. What about his talk about uh, power? Most Nigerians would actually want to see a change in the power supply. He, he says something about um, power generation should nearly double and transmission and distribution networks improved. Uh, he also said they will encourage um, states to develop local sources as well. Let's talk about that, Shevin. Well, so on the power side, um, he deliberately, having been very specific 
um, in terms of numbers and what we can hold into mm. in the area of GDP, in the area of jobs, he spoke about one million jobs. Um, he, I thought he was very deliberate about not giving number specifics that you can be held to when he was talking about power. So he said uh, generation will be doubled, at mm -hmm. least doubled. Yeah. Um, what is generation today? Uh, the numbers that are out there is anything from some people will tell you is 9,000 megawatts, some will say it's about 12,000 megawatts, generating capacity. Um, and then he said um, transmission and distribution will improve significantly. Now that's very subjective. Um, for a country that is trending, that has trended at about 5,000, average of about five, between four to 5,000 megawatts um, of electricity distribution capacity, transmission and distribution capacity in the 20 years, 24 years of this republic, I thought we needed something more bolder. It should have been as bold as it was with the GDP in talking about the power because this is one of the biggest problems that we have. You know, so... But it's a good start. I think he was deliberate about not being specific. Mm. Um, so let's let's see how. I think in the first six months to one year of his administration, okay. we'll know whether this is business as usual and more of the same, or whether there will be some radical decisions that will be made to improve the situation in that sector uh, significantly. Okay, talking about um, tackling unemployment and, of course, um, social security, he mentioned uh, uh, working with the National Assembly to uh, fashion an omnibus jobs and um, prosperity bill. Uh, let's talk about it. He said the bill will give um, his administration the policy space to embark on labor-intensive infrastructural improvement, encourage light industry, and provide improved social services and vulnerable. Well, look... Um when, you come, when it comes to job creation, I do not know any government anywhere in the world that creates jobs. It's not the job of government to create jobs. It's the job of government to provide the enabling environment in terms of policy initiatives, in terms of regulation, um, in terms of um, um, the, uh, the, the rule of law, for example, to ensure that businesses can thrive, to ensure that productivity can explode. When that happens, jobs will be the natural fallout. Um, so the omnibus um, regulation, uh, that will, the omnibus uh, yeah, um, uh, legislation from the National Assembly, we'll wait to see the details. What, what, what exactly does that mean? Um, running infrastructure projects that are labor intensive, you know, how many jobs will they provide? How many jobs can they possibly provide? Or infrastructure projects where? How much funding does the federal government have? How can you speak about that and not address the revenue problem um, and the investment problem? Whether you're talking about foreign direct investment or you're talking about boosting the local investment appetite, you know, within the local economy, you can't speak about jobs, infrastructure, and not deal with that. So, I think those were rhetorics. I'm not sure. I think we just have to wait for details um, uh, from from him in the in the coming days. Uh, to see how that will play out. Obviously, that then speaks to the issue of cabinet formation and hitting the ground running, as he, as he has been saying. Whether he will hit the ground running or not will not be a function of the speech he delivered yesterday. It will right. be a function of the actions he will take in the next two weeks. Okay, Shago, as we, as we round off now, my final question, I still want to talk a little bit about um, the house cleaning that he talked about, uh, the, the monetary policy. Because, Shago, you would agree with me that we've not really had it well. The, the MPC keeps on increasing um, interest rate and uh, you know, the inflation rate is not actually friendly and all of that. The, 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 uh, he said that the central bank must work towards a unified exchange rate. He also talked about uh, how it would direct funds away from arbitrage and into meaningful investment in the plant, equipment, and jobs that will power the real economy. But let's really talk about um, the, 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 the monetary policy, uh, the um, uh, policy of uh, the government. Now, what should be the focus right now in the next um, 100 days as we round off? Look, the, I think one of the biggest problems we've also had has been the CBN and the CBN governor. With all due respect to him, his person, and anybody that might be offended, I think the policy um, um, implementation uh, approach of this governor has been, at, at best, erratic. There hasn't been any coherence uh, between exchange rate policy um, uh, formulation and implementation. 
interest rate policy formulation and implementation, and fiscal policy, you know, formulation and implementation. There has been a disconnect in, in all of those things. Uh, so exchange rates is going in one direction, interest rates is doing its own thing, the fiscal authorities are doing their own thing. We need to bring all of those things together, and I think that's what the president means by a house cleaning. So as a starting point, this uh, uh, preponderance of an increase in the NPR rates to manage inflation must stop. I have been saying this since it, since the NPR got to the region of about 16 percent, 17 percent. The more you continue to push the NPR rates up, the more you are stifling production and investment. You know because you are you are creating a situation where access to uh, credit uh, by the by the sectors that need them most is being stifled. You know, so that needs to be dealt with. The oh, thank you so much. And, 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 and be a bit more coherent with this form, uh, policy formulation. Thank you so much, Shego. That's as much as we can take on um, this discourse. I would do appreciate your time. Shego Shokpito is a principal partner, World Regents Court Consulting. He joined me to analyze the President's inaugural speech and how the effect would be on the economy. We do appreciate your time, Shego. Thanks for having me. All right, that's the size of the show for today. Business Insights will return again, same time tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. See you again next time.